You are listening to the Starter Girls Podcast with Jennifer Loading. Whether you are starting a project, starting a business, starting a brand, or starting a movement, we are here to talk about it. And the Starter Girls Show is brought to you by Walt Mills Photographer of Glad Models Agency. If you are in the Dallas or surrounding area and you're looking for some photography work, check out Walt Mills. You can learn more about him and his work at photosbywalt.com. And with that, we are going to get things started. Today is a great day to be brave. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up, be amazing, be you, do you. All right, my friends, I am super excited to welcome my guest to the show today, Miss Karen Gray. Welcome, Karen. Hello, hello, hello. I am excited to have you on here. So I'm going to tell my listeners a little bit about you before we get going. Oh, Lord. So Karen is a mindset coach, professional speaker, and podcast host, we will be talking about that, whose mission is to help women level up their confidence to achieve their dreams, goals, and calling. Her coaching and writing journey began in 2008 with her daughter as a necessity for a single mom. It soon blossomed into a side hustle and ultimately became her full-time passion. Today, Karen shares from the heart on virtual stages around the world and is on a mission to help women move the rocks out of their bags and live their best life. So you know we're going to be talking about those rocks a little bit today. We're, we're going to talk about to. the rocks. Yes. So I want to kind of take it back a little bit because obviously, yeah. you know, my audience doesn't know you yet. And, and I always say this when people come on the show, we don't just wake up and arrive right we don't right. <laughs> it'd be great if we did life would be so less complicated would it not but yeah. that never happens that way so I, sh I should come with a disclosure too so that would be safer I, there you go love it i love it i think we all need disclosures <laughs> We should have like, and the disclosure is, and go, and that could be just like pages, you know? <laughs> um, anyway, so I want to take it back. Tell us a little bit about how this came for you. Like, how did this develop and evolve for you into becoming this coach and the speaker in this podcast? Yeah. Um, so as, as you mentioned in my bio, I started um, writing speeches for my daughter. She did rodeo queen competitions, which are just pageants, but their talent is horsemanship. And um, part of that contest was speeches. And so I love to write. I've always loved to write. Um, and I couldn't afford to pay somebody to write her speeches, so I began to write them. And then I coached her on how to deliver them. And she started winning. And then you know, it just evolved where other people wanted me to do it for their kids, our friends. And um, so it just organically developed into this thing where now I'm helping kids and then parents are reaching out, having conversations. And then I'm create this website and start doing this. So um, start doing it to get paid a little bit and um, found that if people pay for coaching, they actually show up for it. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. Right? New concept. New concept. <laughs> um, they take it serious. They right. get invested in it and invested in the success. Um, but then people saw my website and started contacting me about other coaching. Can you do this? Can I talk to you about that? Um, so it really just organically happened. And um, I had been in financial services. I was a financial advisor for many years. Um, banking, credit unions, kind of did a little bit of everything. That kind of evolved. Um, but I was really, really burnt out and felt like I just, what I love to do was the relationship side right. of the industry. I love sitting down with families and helping them and just felt called to do that. Um, but that wasn't making me any money in the industry. I mean, if you don't get new clients, you're not making money when you're commission based. Right. So, right. Um, I decided I wanted to do something where I felt called, felt like I was making a, a difference while I developed this coaching thing that I was doing. I didn't know what that was going to be. Um, started working for the American Cancer Society and really felt like I was doing something amazing there. I was um, working with people and building those relationships and serving um, and then building my coaching business on the side. Um, COVID hit. And the American Cancer Society made some tough decisions, and my position was one of the ones eliminated. And voila, here you are. A, I am a full time coach. I so. love it. You know, it's interesting with COVID because I think so many things have happened to people, mm -hmm. but. You know, I think humans are resilient, and I think that the beauty, yeah. I don't want to say there's really a lot of beauty in the COVID thing, but I do want to say that 
in that people are evolving. And, you know, it's interesting because you, when you talk about your position mm -hmm. being terminated and then here you are all of a sudden I got to be this full-time coach now you know right. it was I talk about even in my journey it was kind of the same thing a little different story but you know I had been evolving into this and probably working on this on the side for probably the last like two years and then mm -hmm. when COVID hit it was all of a sudden everything that I had done before I could no longer do in that capacity I had to yeah. evolve I had to regroup and it was really a, a, I don't even want to say like you're just coming to the table and it's like okay what do we do now we got to do something completely different and mm -hmm. so my business actually picked up in this process right. because I was forced to make some changes and do things a little bit differently. So I think there's some silver lining in some of that. And so, yeah. you know, I think that I don't want to say that, yeah, great, your your position was terminated, but I think that you're in the place probably where you needed to be. And 100%. it's giving you a, a great vehicle to build those relationships Yeah, you know, on your terms. On I, your had, terms. I had a plan. Yes. And um, I wrote it down, mm -hmm. told God what my plan was. I'm going to do this in 2021. And I think, um, or I believe that he had a different plan. Yeah. And part of that plan is getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And so my plan was very comfortable. Right. And so right. pushing me out of the comfort zone and um, allowing me to be in a space where I had to um, make some tough decisions, uh, make some brave decisions, and do some things scared um, has taught me that I can. Right. So, right. Um, you know, I embrace and, and have gratitude for that. I love that this. transition. And um, I listened to a podcast today uh, with Gary V. Yes. He's a powerhouse. He's amazing. <laughs> um, it's not kid friendly. No, but, but he is. It's but a powerful podcast. It's, it's powerful. powerful. And yes. he talked about that, how, um, you know, in this COVID change, entrepreneurs rise to the top because yeah. this is what we we're created to be right right and as a coach you're an entrepreneur yes. I mean, you're a solo business yes. and so when it when i heard that i was like yeah that that it, that make that make or break line yeah is really when we're going through things like 9 11 and the right. 2008 financial crunch and all of the these things that are happening through covid you're really finding out you know what you're made of is this really what i'm called to do and it's that defining yeah. moment of pressure i agree i because i think people they do they make change when they're either mm. pulled by a longing or pushed by some kind of pain to get them in that direction and so yeah. i agree with you 100 percent on that and i i think you're right the cream rises to the top yeah. and you get when you get pinned against a wall you you start becoming resourceful you start figuring you know what do i need to do yeah when <laughs> you don't have it not working when you don't have a plan b you got to yes. go with plan a you make it get, work you better make plan a work and i love gary b i do follow him he, he is it, you're right it's not kid friendly but he is a powerhouse and he yeah. says he says the things a lot of people are thinking and too afraid to say you 100%. know he, he just is out there and i think that's why people are attracted to that because it's yeah. authentic and real and just dry yeah so. he, he doesn't um he doesn't plan a lot of things ahead of time, no, he said. right. So everything that you hear from him is genuine and authentic. Yeah. And I think that's why it resonates so much because it's um, yeah, it's from experience. Right. One of the things, it was one of his, um, I don't know if it was on Instagram or where I saw, he was talking about when he was, the process of buying, like he wants to buy the Jets. I think, I think that's what he was talking about. Don't hold me to that. I may be wrong, but I want to say it was the Jets. Yeah. And he was talking about, he was more excited about, the process of buying the jets and actually buying the jets, you know, and somebody, I, I can totally resonate with that. And I get mm -hmm. that absolutely what he's talking about for a lot of people. They don't understand that. And you know, the whole idea as coaches, when one of the things that I always talk about with people is really learning how to enjoy the process rather than the end goal. Because mm -hmm. if you think about like a marathon, for instance, and I can say that because I have run those, you know, people, when we train for marathons, we train for the big day, the big day happens and you're excited that day and then it's over and you go, what do we do? Yeah. I'm done. I'm over. And you're like, Think about down. a wedding. You, you plan yeah, for exactly. a year or two right, years and right. there's so much stress and yes. then you get to the day yes. and it's over. And, and so what if you turn that around and yeah. you really just relish all of the process in yes. between, you know, then it makes the whole experience powerful and positive. And then when that day happens, you've had this whole journey. Right. going through this process and it's no more now it's no more tied to that end result and that's what we do as coaches is really try to I was just teach thinking, people yeah. to 
relish the moment. So yeah. that's what I remember. I, I listened to all of Gary V's, but that was one of the ones he talked about that really stuck out in my mind because for years, you know, before I went through my whole transformation, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Everything that I did was based on an end result. And so I would go from one thing to another. It's like complete this task. I'm very task oriented and I like competing. And so yeah. I would go to one thing, complete that how to success let's go to the next thing and right. I never really relished all those moments in between and now I have a very different idea about things it's more of Same. if I want to enjoy the process and if I'm not going to enjoy the process I don't care about the end result it's not going to happen yeah I so. I've learned some of those same lessons and um you know it's the same about life if yeah you're, if you're not in the moment enjoying the moment every part of the way then 100%. um you know, the marriage isn't fun because there's hard days. Right. The kids aren't fun because they get sick and they're hard. And, and they get mouthy. And they, get, <laughs> and they turn into teenagers. They turn into teenagers, yes. <laughs> and then some, right? Yeah. So. And then they stay teenagers for a while. Right? Like, when, when's the adult stage come on <laughs> so that maybe we get back to the normal conversations? But yeah. Yes, but I that's, I've, I've found some, some joy in the journey. Um, you know, it, we can choose to see the good or we can choose to see the bad. They're both there. 100%. 100%. So we talked about relationships and really connecting. And I, I want to, I guess, maybe talk a little bit about, we, we've hit challenges too, because we know, we kind of know the challenges yeah. too that you've gone through in your, in your, let's talk about your podcast a little bit, because I want to talk about that. Like how I did that, how did this, yeah, let's that. talk about that. How did that come about for you? Because I, I don't imagine that you just woke up like overnight, like I'm going to do this podcast today. These mm -hmm. again involved. And let's talk about that a little bit, what it's about, what you're doing with that and what, get you fired up about it um so part of the process of becoming a coach or whatever you're launching right and people don't just wake up one day and say i want to find karen gray right i want to work with her whatever um you've got to start finding your place yeah. in this because there's people out there that i can help but how do they find me how do right. i find them um and so I started looking at, at different things of ways that I can get out there. You know, there's there's business um, modalities of plans and things that you can do to implement. Um, and one of the things that you can do is to host a podcast. Right. Just to get out there so people can start seeing you, start hearing you, finding out what you're about so they can see, is that a good fit for me? And um, the reason Rock Movers came about is um, a friend of mine that I went through training with, Casey Haston, who introduced me to you. Yes. Um, she's doing a podcast. Yeah. And she kept telling me, you know, you should start a podcast. And I was like, nah, that's not for me. I don't like to do that. But then I watched her in action. And it's just like, yeah, that, that resonates so yeah. much with me. Um, but in a, a different way. She's definitely a connector. Mm -hmm. But I saw it as um, one of the, the speeches that I give is about um, having confidence. And confidence comes from letting go of our past and our regrets mm -hmm. and moving those heavy rocks yes. out of our bag to lighten the load and choose the things that we want to pick up and carry, yeah. the lessons rather than the guilt and the, the negative right. parts. Right. Um, and then as you do that, you can begin to move the rocks for other people and help them along the way. Because it's not just about my journey. Sure. It's about what can I do with this journey? Right. Um, and what can I do with what I've learned? And, you know, I didn't go through all this to just do it for me. Right. So um, rock movers became a, a saying out of that. A, a friend of mine, I said it in a, in a thing and she's like, hashtag rock movers. Rock and I'm movers. like, that's stuck. Yes. That's stuck. So... That's who, you know, that, that's who I represent is people who can move those rocks. And that's what you do. And that's what Casey did sure. for us. And so um, I just started looking into it. And, and what could that be for me is giving other women um, a voice and a, a platform where I can cheer them on and support them and love them and um, give them a, a vehicle through my podcast to tell their story. And to find other people because there's people that I'm going to reach, but there's people that need to reach them. Yeah. And so by giving them a voice on my podcast, um, that gives me a chance to do what I love best, which is empower and support and encourage other women. That's what I do. That's who I am. But it also gives me a chance to put 
um, my voice and their voice voice together and show that um, that partnership and that friendship that women by me giving you a voice it doesn't diminish my life absolutely right um, and it it sends out this message that I want to get out because yeah. for so long I compared my worst days to other people's best days right. and Which never, never felt like I was going to measure up yeah. And so once I was able to stop doing that, um, I could cheer for others earnestly and sincerely and honestly and really, really want them to do their very, very best um, regardless yeah. of anything back for me. And so that just, it all just aligned yeah. and came together. So good. So many things. I'm listening to everything that you say, and there's like so many things coming to mind because the show that we recorded right before yours, Jen Johnson, was talking about so many incredible things about women, and, there, and we were talking about Andrea Crum and, and yes. how women having their significance. And yeah. a lot of this comes into play when you said not diminishing you because we know that we can't do this alone. Right. And the, the thing is, is when you come from a place of confidence, you no longer have that scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. So we don't feel threatened that if there are 10 of us coaches in a room, we all know that we bring a different, unique power to the table. Exactly. We all maybe have the same message, but the way we deliver is a mm -hmm. bit differently. And, you know, I joke about this, and I don't know if I shared this with you, but when I was in one of my other network marketing companies, I remember going to a networking event, and I remember this guy, if you ever see this podcast, he'll laugh about it, because every time I've seen him since this time, he always says that he remembers me because of this, but he had asked me what was different about my company versus somebody else, and my response to him was, you don't get me. Yeah. If you go to the other company and he never forgot that. So every time I would see him at events, of course, we're not doing a lot of events because of COVID, but every time I would see him, he remembered me because of that statement. So I firmly believe that when we come from a place of, as Andrea Crum put it, when we know our significance in this mm -hmm. world, we don't feel threatened. And we know that we bring something different to the table that can add value to you and to your people. So that's why I do bring coaches on here because I don't feel like you know, I need to worry about, like, I feel like th the person needs to get something from you. They need to get something from you. If they I need to get that. something from somebody yeah. else, they need to get that because whatever they need is what they need. And I'm not to judge what they need and who they need to get it from. So, Absolutely. and there's no, there's no lack of people that we can help. I mean, there's Absolutely. 7 billion people on yes. this planet. Yes. You can't serve them all. No, I can't serve I don't have them time. all. <laughs> Nor the energy. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do we want to, because yes. not everybody speaks our language exactly. or um, has exactly. a need that we can fill. Right. Right. So um, I love that. And I love that, that you're doing that for me and, yeah. and giving me the opportunity to do that for you because it's so true. Yeah. 100%. And I love your little podcast. It's so cute. The rock moves. I love it. The rock thing, the whole, you know, the little <laughs> thing about the rocks. It's so great. I it love it. Me. It's just, yeah, it does. It fits your personality and everything. And it's so great what you're doing. And, you know, one of the things in my background that I learned, you know, coming from network marketing mm -hmm. in the company that I was is that the story sells. The story is what connects people. People yeah. don't want to hear you get up and, and tell them some candid sales pitch about how you're a coach and you, and you can do this. But when you have a story that they can resonate with and and they can say okay she's not just talking the talk she's mm -hmm. walked it she's been through something and she can say hey this is what I did yeah and this is what helped me and I can show you how to do the same thing that speaks volume so I, I believe 100% in the story so I love that you're doing that and that's what I think a lot of us try to do on our podcast is really capture stories I love tell I love people's stories I love finding I love finding out about people what they've had to overcome to, to rise up. That to Doesn't me, it just baffle you and amaze you? Yeah. Like, it gives me chills. It gives me yeah. excited because it just shows that it just shows to me how people can evolve. People can yeah. rise. They can do they can do anything that they put their mind to if they want it bad enough. If they want it bad enough, mm -hmm. they can do it. And that's what it's all about, right? And it's usually for me, the people that I think, you know, gosh, they've got it all together and they've had such this easy yeah. life. I mean, take, you know, Julie Ziegler yes, Norman, yes. for example. You think, you know, she's a Ziegler. She's right, had this right. super posh cake life because her dad was Zig. Right. And you get to, you know, meet her and learn about her story. And it's like, no, life happens to all of us. Yes. And it's what we do with it. But which, by the way, for our listeners, they don't know that because we were on a group session arranged by Karen with Julie, yeah. Zig Ziglar's daughter. And so we had a powerhouse conversation with that. We need to get her like on these podcasts too, so we can just we share will. her story. She's got a great you story. Know? So love it, love it. So 
This has all been wonderful, Karen. Who would you say has been some of your greatest influencers over the years? Um, absolutely, Julie. As you know, yes. you know our connection, Julie. Um, beyond all of her things that she's done on the stage, um, Julie was a youth pastor with her husband and um, carried our family through some really tough times with my son, um, who was born micropremia at 12 ounces. And wow. when I say carried us, I mean literally like she took my daughter to school. She brought me her favorite casserole, which I'm still waiting on the recipe. Um, but she's been amazing and just really poured faith and um, sincerity and honesty into yeah. my life and became that little voice in the back of my head of, um, you know, I, I joke about the WWJD, you know, that you, yes. you used to have the bracelets, what would Jesus yes, do? Yes. Mine became that, but to the point of what would Julie do? <laughs> I was going to say, was it what would Julie do? I love yeah, it. I literally had one that said WWJD. How would Julie and handle this situation? How would she handle this? And what would I want to be accountable to her for yeah. because I respected her so right. much? I love that. Um, uh, in addition to that, I had a mentor when I was um, at Florida State and living in Tallahassee and um, just going through my early years of being a parent and trying to figure out my why and what am I supposed to do in this world. I was working at a bank, and um, his name is Mark Tuigo. He is another man of faith. Um, absolutely adore this man. He's became like a, a father figure or a big brother. Um, I don't want to call him father, father figure because I don't want to tell him how old he <laughs> is. But um, I'm young enough to be his daughter. That's so funny. So, um, yeah. But he just helped me kind of discover my, my strengths. Yeah. He had a consulting business that did that. But then more than that, he just became that mentor of someone who believed in me. Yeah. Not specifically – you know, just what I could do. But he saw something in me that was worth saying, don't you give up, kiddo. Don't, yeah. you know, don't you dare give up on yourself. Um, and, you know, he's just an amazing person. He was diagnosed with cancer and a very rare um, blood cancer. Mm. Um, was told he had weeks to live, and that's been seven years ago. Wow. And he's never taken treatment. Um, he literally walks by faith and wants to be, you know, God's miracle. And he's proven that, you know, faith is, is stronger than any medicine. Powerful. Wow. Um, yeah. Not that he doesn't, you know, believe sure. in medicine, but sure. that's his journey. Yeah. yeah. And um, blows me away. Just wow. absolutely blows me away because of his strong faith and what he believes in so strongly. And to see that, I mean, he's been shot. He's been, yeah. you know, served military. He's... Um, been through some amazing things and that was always a very big encouragement for me sure that again you know the human spirit's amazing and remarkable and we were not created to just roll over and die or be self-serving 100 percent. i love it so great so i have to ask you this question because we have to talk about the mindset because you're a mindset coach so yeah i want to i want to yeah, ask this question you when you're going after something whatever mm -hmm. that is Anything that you've been through, what does that mindset look like for you? Um, for me, it's um, that dogged determination that you talk about for yeah. you. I love that word. <laughs> I love that word. It just. My writer that did my, help me with my book came up with that. And I'm like, that is so me, dogged determination. Yeah, just <laughs> just this, um, you know, I I feel like this this. Uh, it's it's just that grit yeah. that in your gut. That's a good word too. I like that word too. Um, just in your gut, you know that you know you, that you know that whatever this is yeah. is what you're going to do. Um, and I'm I write mm -hmm. and I do a lot of um, I call it a brain dump. Yeah, where I just take a piece of paper and I'm just writing. And even if it's just like this is how I feel about it. This is what I see in it. This is the possibility. Um, or if I'm just on a fence, I'll draw draw a line on a piece of paper. These are the good things about this decision. This is these what are the pros and cons. These are yes. the pros and cons, and um, I I'm a kinesthetic learner, so sure. I see it, think it, hear it, say it. Um, so I just do all of those things, and I love it. Um, that's just how I get through everything, yeah. every decision, and um, the tough stuff. Yeah. When I, I was so, thinking about your 
pros and cons. When I was in sales, I used to always do that with people. I would give them, I'd always say, you know, let's do this. Give yourself a 24 hour window because mm -hmm. anything beyond that, you're going to start overthinking anyway. Right. So, and I would always say that, you know, do a pros and cons mm -hmm. list, list all the things that are the positive if you do this yeah. and list the negative. And if the pros outweigh the cons then you probably should move forward, you're going to always have cons. They're always, Absolutely. every, anything you do, you're always going to have those. But the goal here mm -hmm. is that you want your pros to outweigh those cons. And yeah. if they do, then you need to pursue whatever it is. So I yeah. love that. That's the other great. thing I do, and, and this I got in um, a counseling session, yeah. therapy session for marriage or divorce at the mm -hmm. time. <laughs> um, yeah. And it was if I had two pills mm. here and you could take this pill yeah, and it would um, undo yeah. everything that's going on and you could do whatever you want, then would you take that pill or this pill would um fix it mm. and you could continue That's on this good. path but it's fixed yeah so this is basically you're going to undo it start over yeah and this is you're going to fix it and continue Love that. so i take that and i apply it to different scenarios like if i'm in a job and yeah. i'm not happy with it yeah if i could fix this job would i want to stay here or take this pill the blue pill yeah and i can start something new and fresh and just sit with that decision so i've taken the the red pill right and this job is fixed and now i'm in this position how do i feel about that it's good and then the next day i take the blue pill yeah and i'm starting fresh and how does that feel does it feel authentic does it feel like i'm scared does it yeah. you know where am i at and so i take them on two different days and really sit with that decision for a few hours or if i like sometimes i just know immediately. yeah you just get it figured there's out. no peace there i feel just stressed and now i'm worried about all this that's not the right decision right right i love that that's a good way to look at it karen i like that you're, you're great about those pick the, doing the you know the visualization with that so i love Thank that you. So I want to do a fun, couple fun rapid fire questions. I love it. it. Favorite part of my podcast. You not that I me. don't love all the other stuff, but this is my favorite because I get to find out the the kind of cool things, I guess, so to speak. So okay, the real so stuff. the real stuff. Yes. Yeah. So morning or night person? Definitely night. Definitely night. Okay, I love. It. I'm a morning person. So we know. I know not to call you early. <laughs> don't call me late. We got it figured out. All there. Chris knows, I always joke about this. Certain time I tell him, like, we don't do not do anything too late. Like, we have to mm -hmm. do anything in this studio because after that, my brain's going dumb. I actually get kind of funny. I just get dumb. All right. So, cat or dog person? Dog. Dog? Do you have a dog? I have two dogs. Okay. I have a German Shepherd and then I have a really chubby healer. But he's just big I love boned. it. You got big dogs like me. I have big dogs. I've never had a little dog. So, I love it. We, that we have in common. See? All right. And Karen, what would you say is your favorite food? Anything Mexican food. I, gr I grew up in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> We're like scoring here two for two because my guest yes. before this said Mexican food. You said Mexican food. Now I love Mexican. So we know we can all connect. Yeah. I like Taco Tuesdays. My favorite day of the week. <laughs> I'm a, I love chips and salsa. I can eat chips and salsa like all day, every day. And, it need, and I said this on the other mm -hmm. podcast. It needs to be in the restaurant. The bags at home are not the same. You got to go to the restaurant They're not chips the and same. salsa. They're not the same. And cil with cilantro. I love cilantro. Yes, I love it. All right. And if you could be any superhero or character for a day, what would you pick? I, this may be like really weird, but I really want to be a guy for one you, day that I, i've never had anybody say that and i think that's great you could be whatever you want I, any particular guy or just be a guy for a day like any like character i mean you could pick any of them there's some really cool ones out there yeah. you know i i could be thor and like have this big hammer and like just be, be this this yeah. really hot arrogant guy and for a day chris hemsworth you're good looking so right <laughs> um you could iron be man you know like super intelligent you have all this yeah. techno stuff right Superman, ah, uh, no, yeah. it's kind of older. Gotcha. So maybe, you know, Captain America, he's yeah. super cool. Yeah. Um, You know, military guy, really patriotic. Just see what it's like to be but a I want to be a guy for one day. Just see what it's like to be a guy, right? Not have to put makeup yeah. on, not get dressed like a girl, none of that you know, kind of stuff. You could do your thing standing up. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> Sorry. This is a, this is why I love this part of the podcast because I find out everything. So you like, know, I just I don't understand, guys. So I would want to know. Yeah. One day, not that I don't understand. You just totally I'm, made my whole day today with this part of the show. This is so great. I love it. I love. I I have a love and respect for my brothers and my you know yeah. men. Um, adore my husband. I'm very happily married. Um, but there are just some things about guys that are different. They than have us. some advantages. I love this. And you know what we. 
I, I, I'm sitting here thinking as we're going through this, like I need to have like guests back on and just do rapid fire questions. Like that's all we Ooh, do is like ask a panel. These, yeah, so like fun. we do these kind of questions because this is the best one. But I, I own that answer. That is, I, I that's gonna, my absolutely, answer. Absolutely, I've never had anybody say that, and that is like the best one yet so far. <laughs> I've got we've had so many different things in here. It's been so funny. I, that's one my, of my husband's favorites. gonna see this and he's just gonna be shaking his head. I like, know. I think this is so good. I think that's this my is crazy so good. Irish wife. I love it. So Karen, if our listeners wanted to learn a little bit more about you your podcast all of that great stuff where yeah. do we send it um i'm on facebook instagram and linkedin um and my website is coach karen gray so uh, it's gray with an a and they can find me anywhere I'm, awesome and you'll see we got you scrolling across there I, we will make sure when this it. goes out we tag you we get all the thank good you. stuff on there so we can get get it all in the right place for you. you so i do you. want to tell you thank you for jumping on here you're doing good things great things i love your podcast and i'm, I'm so, so excited, excited and proud of you for you know making that leap from here to here i know that's a very different territory so and uh but you'll have the ability to have some amazing influence on people, and I think that's the best part of all. I'm of this, just, so. I'm just called and excited, and uh, appreciate the opportunities and your friendship. And thank you for what you're doing yeah, here. Yeah, thank you. Starting good stuff. That's right. Thank you. Love it. So with that, I do want to say to our listeners, of course, if you love our show, please give us a rating both on iTunes and Facebook. And as I said in the other show, you can now find us on iHeartRadio and Amazon. And be sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And with that, I'm going to leave you guys with a final thought. Your worth is not measured in likes, comments, notes, or followers, but in your ability to love, be kind, and keep negative comments to yourself, take notes, and lead by example. I love that one. I and with that, that you guys take care, be safe, and be kind to one another. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.